and then we're still saying that we paid in 15,000 to get us to that 3,000 uh, 145 but we're gonna have an other credit right because now we've got this credit for the child tax credit so let's add that to our worksheet so I'm gonna put it up here in the other credits. So I've got another page on over here for other credits. And uh, this is the other taxes. I'm looking other credits. There's the child tax credit. I'm just gonna plug it in at the 2000. I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail in terms of, of uh, recalculating the credit at this point. Again, you could make your worksheet to be more or less detailed, having phase outs and whatnot and accounting for refundable and non-refundable. We'll talk more about that when we get into the child tax credit in more detail. Right now, we're just focusing in on the qualification of the dependents just to note where the other kind of places where that dependent might have an impact. And by the way, I might wanna do it this way. Instead of, I'm gonna say a uh, child tax credit, I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna move this one down by selecting some rows and insert. And let's actually make this, let's make this, uh, black and white and then I'll leave some space so I can have multiple children that we might apply out and I can kind of list them out and then I'll have the total child uh, tax credit credit and I'll indent that one like so and then I could say this is child number number one two thousand and I'll sum this up in the outer column equals the sum up here and then this one i'm going to sum the outer column so that when i add other credits this will be the total of all the other credits that's going to pull into my tax form right here so we'll get more into the credits later it gets a little kind of messy when there's phase outs and refundable or non-refundable stuff but for right now we're just going to say there's uh the child tax credit and so there it is. So that gets us to the total tax of the 9855. So there's the 9855. We paid in 15,000, we're saying on the W-2. So that gets us to the tax uh, of overpaid 5145. So there's the 5145. So we can kind of mirror what is happening. We'll get into some of these other line items in more detail later, but just to get an idea again of, of what's impacted when we, when we have the dependent. Now, if I add another dependent, what is going to be impacted? Well, I'm not going to have another different impact on the standard deduction here because I'm not going to, it's not going to move me up to married. Married. Yes. <laughs> or anything from head of household. But, and I'm not going to have another impact on the change to the tax in terms of tables, although the, although, uh, the tax, and, but I, I will have an impact on the child tax credit here if it was another qualifying child. So let's go back on over and say, let's add another one. So now you can see, now we've got two down here, Sam and Jane, social security numbers. We're saying they both qualify for the uh, child tax credit. And then uh, we're still at the head of household, right? Because there's no other place we can go. We're not gonna go to qualify, right? Widow, widower. So it's just that, so we're not always gonna have a situation where the change in the dependents is gonna have an impact on the filing status. So down here, there's no change on the standard deduction. Uh, the taxable income is still at the 80,006, but on page two, we would then expect the tax is now 11, uh, eight, same, but now we've got this 4,000 in the child tax credit, right? So I'd have to go back on over here and say my other credits, we've got child two, child number two, and another 2,000. That brings us up to 4,000. So the 4,000 pulls over here, total tax at the 7,855 and then 7,145 uh, over here. So there's 7,855 withholding brings us to 7,145. So you can see we'll get into more details on phase outs and that kind of stuff later. But now let's just think about, well, what if the income was below a certain threshold just to see the other big impact which is often going to be the earned income credit, which usually impacts lower income individuals, right? So if I said, what if I drop the income down to like 20,000, 20,000, uh, and then my withholdings were like 4,000, let's say, then now you've got the same head of household status. We've got the two uh, dependents, incomes at the 20,000, 
the standard deduction is at the 19,400. So if I go back on over here and I change my income line to 20,000, now I've got now I've got that that means only 600 a taxable income. That means the tax on page 2 is only at $61, right? So I've got $61 down here at the ta at the at the tax being calculated. And so then so the child so the child uh, tax credit or credit for other dependents then uh, is now at at 61 because that's all that's needed to bring the tax down to zero and that's what we get into with this when we talk about the refundable versus non-refundable credits but then down here you've you've got the other parts of the credit you got the earned income credit which is 6164 now so that's a, a huge you know credit that's dependent in part on the children and then you've got the additional child tax credit which is uh 2625 and and that is uh is the refundable portion that's why you don't have the the four thousand up here because you can't because you have that portion of the credit when we look at our form over here we've got the portion of the credit credits that are the uh non-refundable credits that can't take the liability below zero and then you got the credits that are refundable down here so I'm not going to I'm not going to rework my worksheet right here to kind of dive into that because we'll get into more of that when we start to focus on the credits themselves. My main point right now is to just point out that the other big impact could back be on the earned income tax credits and just realize that if if I if I go back on over here, we talked about the idea of going from single to married. If you're in the middle income status and you don't have these refundable credits, which are significant, uh, then it's likely getting married is probably going to be a benefit because married filing joint has the doubling of the tax tables and the doubling of the standard deduction, which is usually a beneficial thing. But if you're on the low income side of things and, and, and we're dependent on these credits, then that's where the, the marriage thing can be a disincentive the way the law is structured. Because again, you could imagine situations where someone was subject to substantial uh, substantial refundable credits, non-married, and if they got married, they might lose access to the credit. So that's where you get into that weird situation where again, we'll talk more about that uh, in future presentations. Okay, let's let's go back to the point we were before and let's say that uh, we're in a, in a married situation. So now our starting point is gonna be married filing jointly but now we've got mr anderson and mrs anderson they got married which is nice so then we're going to say okay the hundred thousand we're back to the hundred thousand we've got no dependents to start out with and that means that the the standard deduction is going to be at the 25 9 and the 74 1 so let's just mirror that in our worksheet over here we're just going to say all right standard deduction jumped up to the 25 9 the income let's say is a hundred thousand 100,000. We don't have any uh, child tax credits at this point. No children to start off with. And we had that 71.4, 71, 71, I mean, 74, 1. You got it backwards, you idiot. Okay. No, there's no need to get. And then 8484. 8, and so let's say this is going to be 8484. 8, and that brings us to the 6516 uh, now if i change and i add a dependent now it's not going to change the filing status even the one dependent because it's not going from single to head of household they're already married so we already the married is basically the highest filing status you can get when married as opposed to non-married 